let's just give it a test run. Let me hear you. Hello, 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 hello. Hello. Ooh. <laughs> hello, everybody, and welcome to the playpen. I am Dawn Sparkles or Bubbles, depending on how you know me. Hey, what's up? I am Luna Lilac. We are here today just to share some space with our kinky friends and just kind of hang out. This is a low pressure environment, low stress environment to just kind of talk about whatever we want and uh, just the goings on in the kink community. Um, this podcast is centered around BDSM, kink and alternative living as a whole. Um, this is definitely not a podcast intended for anybody under 18. So if you are a minor, get out. Okay, now that the kids are gone, uh, <laughs> it is time to kind of just unwind and relax with our friends. How are you doing today, Luna? I am sleepy and do not feel like being a grown-up. It is Monday and very gray and rainy out. So we've just been in our jammies. Hiding in a bathrobe. Yeah. It is a cold, groggy-ass day in New England. Um, and it's just wet. It is a classic New England fall outside, and not the pretty kind. Uh, we are just hiding in our jammies with our Dunkin' Donuts, um, our New England staple item. Um, you know, Luna, what's your, what's your classic? Wait, this is a question I have. Do, does every New Englander have a Dunkin' order? Like, they know what they want before they go? I feel like most people do have, like, a regular order. Okay. That, I, this is something I heard from my daddy, and he is from Seattle, and we went to Dunkin' together, and he's like, what's your Dunkin' order? And I'm like, I don't know, whatever's on the menu that day. Like, I don't have a, I don't have a, a selection. Yeah, I think most people do, because, like, <clears throat> I realize the thing that I do that's, like, kind of service missing is I really like to know people's, like, drink orders and coffee orders. Mm -hmm. That way I can just, like, take care of it beforehand or be like, or, you know, just be like, all right, I got it. Or, oh, how do you take your coffee? Mental note for next time. Yes, you have the secretary spirit in you. Yeah. Very nice, very nice. Um, I do not have a classic Dunkin' order for myself. I kind of just order whatever I want. What's what's your normal order? Um, I guess my donkey's order. Um, I'm putting on my Boston accent, even though I never really picked it up um, living in New England. But, you know, I'm around it a lot. But I usually get a large cold brew. Um, if it's the fall, I'm going to get the pumpkin shit. But the rest of the time, we get like French vanilla or whatever, regular cream and sugar, <laughs> the caramel swirl in there. I just like the sugar and basically for it to taste like candy. It's bad. Sounds like diabetes in a cup, but it, it also sounds delicious. Um, I, right now, I'm really uh, enjoying the apple crisp. Is that what it's called? The apple crisp, uh, apple, apple cranberry, cranberry, coconut refreshers. Um, something new, something, something different on the menu. I'm lactose intolerant, so Duncan used to tear me up with their drinks. You know, I get one. Oh God, I get one right before going to class, and I would be sitting in class, rocking back and forth in my chair because I shouldn't have done it, and I knew it. And I was like, well, maybe just a little coffee. So then I started avoiding Duncan. But with these little coconut drinks, it's slamming. This is beautiful. I'm just having. A, I'm having a grand old time. Um, these seasonal drinks are pretty tasty, um, and they rolled them out a little earlier um, in New England. I think just because. Were there Tesla market? <laughs> yeah, since it's all like based around here, they were rolling this out in like August. Which honestly, I simmed for that. I, I mean, was like, pumpkin, give me. Seriously, I, there's you can't walk like ten feet in New England or in Connecticut, especially without running into a Dunkin' Donuts somewhere. Oh, there's this place in Worcester, Massachusetts called Dippin' Donuts, and it's like a really it's. I think I've it's, heard of Dippin' it, Donuts. Dippin' Donuts is hood Dunkin', like. It's pretty terrible. It's in a really rough part of the town. Of town, like there's a lot of drug abuse in that area, but their coffee is fucking amazing. So I have had some of the best coffee, and the people who hang out outside are pretty nice. Couple of couple of, you know, older older like Eastern European gentlemen mm -hmm. outside with their uh, their donkeys or their dippins because it's not donkeys. Um, <laughs> outside with their dippings just kind of hanging out and like playing games. they don't care if it's cold or hot they are outside chilling and i'm like all right good for you 
So if you are in Worcester, Massachusetts, go to Dippin' Donuts. Get, show those people some love. It's good coffee. And they have so many good flavors, like random shit on their menu you wouldn't order. That's like Mary Lou's, which is another New England staple. They have all kinds of super delicious flavors. But I've never seen it outside of anywhere but New England. I've seen it in Massachusetts, some in Rhode Island. I'm not sure if it's a Connecticut thing, but Mary Lou's is another good local New England coffee conglomerate conglomerate i don't know why i said conglomerate i could have just said brand but i <laughs> said some weird ass word um, all right uh our first topic at hand is getting to know your host and your general host being moi dom sparkles or bubbles depending on how you know me um it is th- i feel like it's essential to you know want to if i'm gonna sit here and 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 post a whole show about my opinions and my thoughts and my feelings and all of this other stuff, I feel like you should at least have a fundamental understanding of who I am as a person. Um, you know, something, something like that. But, uh, I guess I should consider where to start. Um, I did not write a script for this on purpose because this is an opportunity to show who I am authentically, uh, without being, I don't want to have too much time to perfect my image. This is, this is it. This is what we're putting out there is an authentic view into the mind and the household of, are we the Sparkles family or the, I don't want to call ourselves the Fox family. I don't like that. Yeah. We're the Sparkles. Luna Lilac Sparkles. That likes. I like. Yeah, it. Does. Foxy Sparkles. Okay, so all of y'all are my kids now. You got Jesus. my last name. I'm not a Nikki stan, but now. I but think- now. No, I think that's funny because you're the youngest of us. Oh, yes, I am the baby of my household. And now everybody, all, all you, all, quote unquote, all you bitches is my sons. It's. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. So I guess, I don't know. Uh, where do we start? Um, I mean, this is a kink BDSM podcast, so how did you find kink and BDSM? I feel like that's really important for people to know if they're listening. Okay. Uh, how did I find kink and BDSM? Well, first, I am a suburbanite. I'm going to be upfront about that just so uh, it's very clear um, because I think that different groups of people have different experiences with discovering kink, and mine is based in me having being a child who grew up in suburbia and had too much access to the internet. Um, I saw a lot of shit online that I shouldn't have been watching at a relatively young age. Like, I wasn't confused about what I was looking at because I understood, but it definitely was not something I should have been seeing. Um, like, where did, where do you, like, where did you find this stuff? Like, where on the internet? There's lots of weird corners of the internet. Like, at first I found stuff on Facebook, and I feel like Facebook be, is like the low-key, I'm, I'm, there was a point in time where I saw actual porn on Facebook for a while. Oh, Facebook was raunchy for like a hot second in the in the in the in the two uh, the twenty tens. It, it was it was a different landscape. They I were miss, not so family friendly. I miss that. I guess. Ooh, yeah. Because I found most of my early stuff like on Tumblr, but I'm also a little bit older, so I was like in the AIM chat rooms and the. <laughs> fantasy role play sites and i found aim i found aim and all that stuff when they were dying so like a couple of years after i made an aim account they were like yeah we're not those are dead like we're 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 done using them and i'm just like ah but all my friends was there necessarily weren't necessarily friends i shouldn't have been talking to the asses anyway but um i also found all that stuff like i found a bunch of stuff on facebook and then it led me to going and looking at tumblr just out of like sheer interest, um, um, just out of just pure pure curiosity, just being like, what is on here? Back and, in the good old days when there was all the porn on Tumblr. Oh, girl, I was that was woo! the spot. Tumblr was my spot. I went on Tumblr and I saw shit I had never thought I'd see anywhere else. Um, so I was on Tumblr a lot, um. And I kind of just held off on really engaging in any circles. Number one, I was underage, so I already understood I shouldn't have been in those spaces anyway. Um, and number two, I didn't, I did not want to meet someone that wanted to talk to me because they knew I was a younger person. Um, even if they weren't necessarily aware of the fact that I was not old enough to be involved in those communities, 
Um, I just didn't want to, I didn't want to put anybody in a weird spot or myself in a weird spot. So I held off from engaging a lot. Um, then I turned 18 and I moved out of my house. And I went to college and the first thing I did was go on a date with like a 45 year old man because I was just like, I'm not interested in anybody in my age range because at the time I was being a little bit of a smart ass, but I think uh, older and wiser me has looked back and been like, what the hell were we doing? <laughs> what were we doing? Um, so we, we made some mistakes. Uh, 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 off jump, we we dove in too deep. I I wouldn't call it the deep end. It's more like the ocean. I just kind of drowned a little bit in in the kink sauce. How about you, Lena? Um, well, I mean, like I alluded a little bit earlier, I was like pretty sexual and sexually aware from an early age. So my early kink shit was honestly like harry potter roleplay forums and aim chat rooms because i don't know those people had a lot of weird shit on their minds and i was like hmm this is interesting but you know i didn't really do anything with it until probably my mid 20s yeah I, yeah i don't know because i i don't know i didn't lose my virginity until i was 18 or 19 but I don't know. I also was very sexually repressed and didn't really know how to talk about this stuff or share it with partners. Yeah. So I just kind of put it on the back burner for a while. And then um, once I moved back um, to the New England area after finishing my schooling and stuff, I kind of found kink and poly simultaneously and started talking to more people and reading more shit. And I'm like, oh. So this is a thing and makes sense. Yeah. And you said that bit about being sexually repressed. I grew up in a household where sex was not allowed to be a topic of discussion. Like, I, I had four brothers and seven sisters, and I am the baby sister, and there's no way in hell that I was not aware of the fact that my older siblings were, uh, to put it in a very crude way, sucking and fucking. Um, everybody was doing a little bit of something, so, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not obtuse. Like, I know what's going on out there. Um, and I had to kind of like, I, when I, when I left home, I had this sense that like, I was missing out on being comfortable with my sexuality, like immediately, because my mom was very, uh, you need to curb your, your sexual desires. Don't talk about them. Don't bring them up. And, you know, I'm like, okay, well, if I'm being punished for being a sexual being, um, the moment I get access to being able to do that on my own without having to talk to you or having to, you know, have to come home to you and have you kind of be upset with me about it, I did whatever the hell I wanted to do. <laughs> so, yeah, I definitely, I, I relate to the repression feelings and kind of forcing yourself to get over them a little bit in, in, in a kind of way. Like, I, I did the wrong thing. And like I said, I drowned in the ocean for a hot second before I was like, ooh, there's better and healthier ways to be a sexual being than going full-blown into this. Um, that my age gap relationships, like my interest in uh, uh, age gap relationships kind of started there. Um, and my first like age gap partner introduced me to kink and BDSM. Um, and it was really nice to be kind of tucked under somebody's wing for a while and feel like, okay, well, I have this safety net to fall back into if something bad does happen. Unfortunately, the partner who was the safety net was also the something bad that happened. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, really? <laughs> so I, my explore, my exploration was cut short by a partner who was not comfortable with Polly, um, but was very interested in still having sex with other people so he wasn't comfortable with Polly, but he was very comfortable with fucking cheating oh he was, he was very happy about that mm. just just do whatever the hell he wanted um and i don't know six months and a bunch of insanity later i was just like yeah this relationship isn't working um this bs relationship isn't working i'm out and that was really the last time um i practiced monogamy and i have not looked back since um i've been poly since then um, around that time is also where I met our partner. Oh, I don't think I've actually said this on here. Luna is my metamor. Yeah, I guess. I guess. 
I don't know why I said I guess. Uh, we, yeah. It's mostly because we are not poly people who use a lot of labels. We're just super comfortable with whatever's going on. and Yeah, we don't really use labels. We're, like, not into hierarchy either. Nah. Just, I don't know. We're we're buds. We're not romantically involved. But, like, <laughs> we're cool. We hang I, out. I, I love how we say we're not into hierarchy. And I just told Jerry, y'all are taking my last name. And you bitches, <laughs> and you bitches is my sons. So, <laughs> this is a non-hierarchical household but these bitches is my sons and i love them a lot so oh same this yeah Jerry. this is <laughs> this <Jerry. laughs> uh, but yeah like i i i met um our partner foxy around this time and they were like the light of my life when i met them they still are who am i kidding every time i hear from them i'm just like you're such a baby yeah um and we really got Further into the kink scene together, me and Foxy, they were kind of hanging out on the peripheral. Um, man, this would have been a good episode to record with Foxy. I'm sad Foxy's at work right now. Um, but, you know, we... It took us a moment as adults to find places we felt acclim- places we could feel comfortable in. Um, me and Foxy are both two uh, very clearly black people. Uh, we are not, there's no, there's no way you're going to look at us and be confused about who we are and where we're from. And as a result, a lot of the time, um, when we would go to kink spaces, we had a lot of really uncomfortable and awkward situations. And I started to recognize that, like, I wanted to create space myself. Like, I got so sick and tired of going to spaces and feeling like I was not allowed to be there or there was something wrong with my presence there. and. Um, me and Foxy got really caught up in creating our own spaces and our own communities. Um, and I guess it's kind of led us to where we are now, where we have this podcast, which is an awesome opportunity, I think, to kind of share some space and open up the door for people who you normally wouldn't hear from in, in the kink realm, uh, being vocal and being open about who we are and where what's going on um, behind the scenes, because kink has this very eurocentric um very white faced appearance to everybody and also kink has this very unpleasant uh connotations when it comes to anybody living an alternative life because a lot of the time when people hear oh i'm kinky they either immediately assume that when you say you're kinky you mean either a you're going to the dungeon and you are like you know the the man in the black suit beating the woman in the in the cat mask in the corner. And maybe that's your thing. Um, but that's not everybody's thing. And un- unfortunately, the community tends to be viewed that way. Or, um, you know, we're just a bunch of hedonists just humping and, and taking our clothes off and touching each other. And I'm not a fan of hedonism, really. Just for me, you know. Uh, y'all do you, so don't feel like this is a condemnation of your desires. This is just me stating mine. Yeah, being... Kinky does just not mean that we be fucking and sucking everyone. That's that, that's just the long and short of it. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I like to do that, but not just with everybody and every random person. So just because I'm kinky, it doesn't mean I'm going to do stuff with you. Exactly. And this is really, I think that hearing voices in kink that are not always super sexual um, is a good way to kind of broaden the scope a little bit. Um, I also think that black voices and minority voices in the kink scene are just so underheard and it's exhausting. Uh, kind of fighting to be listened to. I, I, I'm I in the opinion that um, the kink community at the moment is about 10 years behind the actual uh, vanilla world. Um, because there's still some really, a lot of repressive people have found that kink is the environment that they can still flourish in because, uh, Kink as a whole has had a really hard time holding people accountable and they want to know the issue is what's the line between accountability and being all up in somebody's business. Um, And I think that's something that we in the world have really been struggling with recently. So I don't know. We'll have to see how things shake out. But in my opinion, if you are going out to events and you come to one of my events, um, you are signing a social contract with me where we are we are friends. Um, we can respect each other. We don't have to be best buddies or, or and you, I, you know, I don't need to call you my son because you, you bitches are not my son. Um, you are 
a welcome part of my life. But if something happens at an event I am hosting, we're going to talk about it. And we're going to talk about it in a way that's open, that's uh, leaving an opportunity for accountability to be had, and also for redemption. Um, I think that's a big part of what's missing from these conversations is the ability for a person to redeem themselves moving forward. And I think it's mostly missing because a lot of people do not want to be redeemed. They do not want to be held accountable. So we never make it to that point. Um, I don't want to put the the onus on the people trying to solve the problem to 100% solve an issue when the people who have caused the problem are making absolutely zero attempts to make things better. Um, so it's rough out here, you know? And, 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 and realistically, I think this podcast and this, this space is going to be a place for us to kind of be open um, and get things running, kind of getting, getting, the, getting the game going, you know, with talking to each other in an environment that's not accusatory and abusive. And, I, and that's something that's really hard to do often. So I am looking forward to kind of facilitating that space, participating in it, um, screaming in it. You know, this is, this is, this is going to be an interesting environment. Um, on top of this podcast, we're also launching a book club, uh, which I am super excited about. Um, the book club is uh, black femme only oriented. Um, it's really a space for us to, again, share space with one another and really discuss uh, things a lot deeper with each other um, over the topics of each book. Um, and it's just, I want to create so many environments for healing and growth. And, um, this is part of the way of doing it. So I am happy for all of the people who have chosen to participate. I'm happy you're here, Luna. Um, you know, you are a welcome member of my household with my cats and all my babies. And this is, this is a good life, even if it is a little frustrating sometimes. <laughs> but frankly, what life isn't? I agree with that. So yeah, uh, I guess that was, this is our first episode. Um, thanks for joining the journey. And we really are looking forward to sharing more uh, information with you guys. If you would like to get in contact with us anywhere online, um, you can follow us on FetLife. Our username is the pin, the, uh, ooh, goodness, I got my own podcast name wrong already. Shit. Uh, our FetLife name is the Playpin Pod. Um, I will also put that in the uh, comment section so you guys can find that or in the description box underneath. Um, we are also going to be at, on Instagram at the Playpin Pod. If you would like to uh, follow me personally on Instagram, my Instagram account is at Dawn Sparkles with a Z uh, at the end, not an S. I will also put that in the description box. Um, and on FetLife, I am Dawn Sparkles. Um, you can follow me on Pet Life. I am Luna underscore Lilac. Um, on Instagram, I think I'm Miss Luna Lilac because I don't know. It's, it's the same username just isn't available on all platforms. Um, I'm also Miss Luna Lilac on Twitter. I don't really post on Twitter, but I'm there. Oh yeah, I have a Twitter account too. It is also Dawn Sparkles with a Z. I never use it. Um, I'm on there occasionally. Uh, please be advised though, all of the content that is on all of these pages is not safe for work. So, uh, don't pull us up on your work laptop unless you want to have a really awkward conversation with your boss in a couple of weeks. <laughs> well, it seems like we've come to the end of our time and we are very thankful for everybody who has joined us for our inaugural episode and we look forward to hearing from you guys. Uh, Feel free to reach out to us over via email as well at the playpinpod at gmail.com. Um, if you have any questions or if you have any suggestions for episodes. Um, until then, uh, we love you and thank you for being here. Have a good day.